let's quickly see the mechanism of ozonolysis. Although it's not important for right, it's not actually very much required to write the product of the ozonolysis reaction, but nevertheless, it's important to get gain insight into the mechanism and to develop more intuition to write the mechanism on your own. So I'm going to teach you how ozonolysis of alkene happens. Now ozone is O3 and O3 has this structure. We show it like this. This bond is a coordinate bond. The both the electron from this bond is coming from this oxygen. And this is how the structure is. You must be knowing it. So this ozone approaches this alkene to initiate the reaction. Now, as such, alkene is non-polar and alkene uh, doesn't have any polarity because the bond between bond is formed between carbon and carbon, both have semi electronegative value and everything that we know. But because in presence, because of the presence of ozone, because of the field effect of ozone, this, this alkene will develop some polarity and electronic transition will start. To say technically, reaction will start. Reaction is nothing but electronic exchange. Now, this oxygen is having one unit of plus charge because it has given its electron to this oxygen because of formation of this coordinate bond. So this oxygen is pulling its electron from the other one to mitigate its electronic deficiency. So this oxygen is electron deficient. Fine. So if at all someone has to go and form a bond or someone has to go to say otherwise someone has to go and accept the electron, this oxygen will go because this oxygen is already making a three bond although it is electron deficient but it can't make the fourth bond. So this oxygen, although it is having highest deficiency, but this will not go and form a bond. In turn, this oxygen will have to go to form a bond because it is having electronic deficiency and it is having two bonds. So this electron will go and form a bond. Electrine is, alkene is electron rich. Alkene will give electron to this oxygen. This bond will come to this position. That means a bond formation will occur here. That will happen actually via orbital of this carbon, the electronic density present here will shift to the orbital of this carbon and from there shift to the orbital of this oxygen. So electron moves from orbital to orbital. Ultimately, the electronic density is going to come here between carbon and oxygen. So I'm showing it like this, this bond coming here. Fine. When this happens, this oxygen is making a bond, accepting electron from somewhere. So it has to break a bond. It should break a bond, otherwise it will start to gain negative electronic density. So it will break this bond, put its electron into the orbital of this oxygen. When that happens, this oxygen becomes neutral because it is having a plus one unit of charge. When it gains the electron, it gains one minus one unit of charge and that plus minus neutralizes each other. So this oxygen will become neutral. This oxygen will have plus charge because the electron of this carbon, this sorry, this carbon is going to have a plus charge because the electron of this carbon has been shifted to this position. So this carbon plus charge, this oxygen minus charge, as if they were made for each other. So this kind of structure is going to appear. As you can see, oxygen carbon, oxygen carbon, oxygen carbon, oxygen carbon, oxygen, 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 oxygen. This pi bond will be broken and this structure we are going to get. This is called molozonide. This intermediate is called molozonide. Now, this is highly unstable. As I have told you before, remember when I taught you photohalogenation, I told you, in general, if you have XX, any halogen, this will be, uh, each halogen will have three lone pairs. There will be repulsion between those two lone pairs, those three, six pair of lo uh, lone pair, six, three pair of lone pair or six lone pair. And uh, because of that repulsion, this halogen will try to minimize that repulsion and then they will move far apart to minimize that repulsion. In that process, the overlapping of the orbital will also decrease. Suppose this was the extent of overlapping before. So when they move far apart, then the extent of overlapping will also decrease. And that makes the bond weak. So they are weak and applying little heat or light, they break. And they give us 2br dot or 2x dot in general. This we studied when we, when we studied photohalogenation in this chapter as a reaction of alkene. Next, when I taught you uh, peroxide addition of uh, alkene, then I told you that peroxide is this. When, when, when we have oxygen-oxygen single bond, this is peroxide. 
there's a repulsion between oxygen and oxygen to minimize that repulsion oxygen atom moves far apart when they move far apart the overlapping decreases and that makes the bond weak so they also be break very easily giving two ro dot i told you this before so whenever we have two atoms adjacent to each other then there's the bond is weak because system is unstable there's high electronic repulsion now here as you can see there are three oxygen in a row and this kind of molozoid structure is highly unstable and this cannot exist like this so there is a rearrangement and rearrangement process will start when someone will give electron rearrangement will be a reaction reaction will start when there will be electronic exchange so someone has to give electron fine that's how that's the only thing that can happen here someone has to give electron someone has to accept electron now, oxygen uh, can the oxygen is the only atom having lone pair so it will give electron where it can give electron not to this oxygen because it is having all lone pair already to this carbon but this carbon cannot accept more electron because it is already having four bonds so it has to break some bond so it will break this bond electron of this bond will go into the orbital of this carbon simple so from this side you can see there's a bond formation between oxygen and carbon carbon is taking electron giving away electron remaining in neutral overall but in this case if this oxygen gives away the electron gives its electron it will gain plus charge so if it gains plus charge it has to gain some electron from the other source now if it does that then this bond half will have to be broken when this bond breaks then this oxygen gains, gains plus charge fine let's see what's happening from this side when this bond breaks this carbon gains ne minus negative charge now when carbon gains negative charge this oxygen must have positive charge then only with negative positive will form a bond now this oxygen must have plus charge that means this oxygen must have neg minus charge this oxygen will have plus charge when you will shift the electronic density of this bond into the orbital of this carbon this oxygen so this 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 past occur when this occurs let's see what we get from this part of molozonide this carbon and this oxygen is going to form a bond there's a cleavage here there's a cleavage here so this part is going to be separated out so from right hand side we are going to get a aldehyde from left hand side let's start drawing the structure this bond is cleaved electronic density on this carbon this carbon plus charge this oxygen is giving electron so this oxygen will have a plus charge because it's giving electron so and this oxygen is bonded with this oxygen so this oxygen will have a minus charge it can't break this bond to mitigate its plus charge density because in that case this oxygen will be separated out as o minus 2 highly unstable ion will not exist as it is so this there will be no cleavage for this bond so these two are going to exist like this this is a rearranged form of or the cleaved form of molozonide now this again this is more stable than this but this is overall not very stable because still we have charges and still we have oxygen oxygen adjacent to each other so what happens is there's a further reaction between <laughs> this and this and uh, this this is called Kriegi intermediate named after Rudolf Kriegi who 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 predicted this mechanism so this this is Kriegi intermediate and i have told this hydroxide ion generally is a base oh minus is a base but in, at high concentration it acts as a nucleophile and i have told you that ammonia is a base but hydrazine is a better base and also acts as a nucleophile hydrazine can attack carbonyl group as well now hydrazine is a better base because of repulsion between lone pair and lone pair of adjacent nitrogen atom because of this repulsion nitrogen will like one of its lone pair to turn into a bond pair if this lone pair turns into a bond pair and form a bond with a now there is a repulsion between bond pair and lone pair which is less than lone pair and lone pair the system becomes overall stable so that's why hydrazine is a better base than ammonia